Now watching Halloween 5. Day 16 of 31 Days of Horror. And this is showing the end of Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. I don't mind when the beginning of one movie recaps the previous one. Like the first few Friday the 13th films always did that. But yeah, the second one, the second Halloween starts with the end of Halloween 1, so it makes sense that 5 starts with the end of 4. And this just kind of intrigues me. He just like fell down a well like, or something, like he's on a Lassie movie. You're expecting Lassie to just, you know, come out um, and start barking and, you know, someone to say, like, what's that boy? Michael Myers is trapped on a well. And then he escapes and gets in the river. I mean, this is intriguing because it's so far-fetched, but... And he just, you know, flips over and, you know, takes it easy, rides the waves down, comes up to this, um other guy's house and you'd think that someone who lives out in the woods like this would be like one of those country bumpkin guys I was like trying to kill him just now but he's just like a nice old man who lives with a bird and it reminds me of Bride of Frankenstein when um, the monster Frankenstein's monster just kind of comes across um, I think it's a, a blind man and just kind of stays with him for a little bit and that's what, who this guy reminds me of, even though he's not blind. He's just like, oh, just a very odd stranger in my house. You're welcome to stay here. So this is one year later, and it is Halloween Eve. And I am totally someone who does that. The day before anything is Eve. I do Halloween Eve, birthday Eve... So here's a part that is kind of, you know, a little perplexing. This man, this kindly forest man um, in his woodland house has housed Michael Myers for a year. And uh, Michael just gets up and puts on his mask and kills him. And Jamie is just kind of having visions of it. She... Um, senses that Michael is coming. And who's gonna feed that man's parrot now? I don't know. I think Michael should have, like, taken the parrot with him. Or, I don't know what kind of bird it is. Taken the bird with him and just, like, perched it on his shoulder and just done everything that he was gonna do anyway, just with a bird perched on his shoulder. And here's my favorite character. No, I'm not talking about Tina. I'm talking about Max the Doby! And here is why I have a soft spot for Halloween 5, is my Dobie girl right here. So here's Rachel's friend Tina visiting, Jamie who's now mute, and Loomis walks in and the dog just starts barking. There's Max barking, there's Stancer looking out the window because she hears Max barking. And here's Tina's equally annoying friend. And Loomis went into the old Myers house. Dancer's chewing on a bone in the background. And he's just like calling out Michael's name, like, come out, come out, wherever you are, just being really creepy. He's not in there, Loomis. So this Michael, or Mikey as they call him, his death happens pretty quickly. He's only like in one or two scenes before this. And there's very few times where you can, you can see that Michael has a sense of humor or his, you know, version of having kind of a dark sense of humor. And this is one of them, definitely. And here's Michael wearing Billy, or not Billy, wearing the other Michael's mask and driving his car. He's got his mask, he's got his car, now he's got his girl. He's just stealing this guy's identity. And here is the cookie woman scene. Tina stopped to get cigarettes at this um, giant cookie woman store. And I can totally believe that the people know what she's talking about because it's just like one of those, you know, local things in a small town that kind of make the town the town. Like, there's weird things in my small little hometown, like 
that you call it by a name and everyone knows what you're talking about. So I totally believe that. This death kind of reminds me of Friday the 13th because, well, if it was Friday the 13th, I would have been like both of them at the same time. But he was on top of her and he speared him with a rake. Michael actually drives the car a lot in the sequels. He drives in pretty much every single movie that he's in. I'm just happy the kittens are okay though, from the barn. And here's the one helpful thing Tina did in this entire movie was sacrifice herself for Jamie and Billy. This is just such a weird scene, like right before he stabbed Loomis, Loomis was like trying to reason with him. And Michael was just, just standing there silently and it just like doesn't seem like something that Michael would do. He doesn't really stop and listen to you unless he's like walking towards you or something. Why is there a cough in there? And it's just like balancing on a bathtub and I like how there's well, I don't like it, but, I mean, did Loomis light all those candles? Was he, when well, the bathtub is, like, trying to get a romantic vibe going? And then here's the scene that just ruins the moment when she takes off the mask. And he has a single teardrop. He has a teardrop on his guitar, like Taylor Swift. Here's the unmasking. Michael Myers, the man behind the mask. Oops, wrong guy. That's Jason. He's the man behind the mask. She's the reason for the teardrop on his guitar. And here's Loomis kind of using her as bait. And poor Max the Dobie's head was in there and they did this really dumb bark sound effect when she saw his head. I think this might be the darkest ending in any of the Halloween movies because Halloween 4, she stabs her stepmother but it still looks like Michael Myers was killed, even though you know he probably wasn't, but this is definitely the darkest ending of all of the movies, but Mountain Man, played by Harper Roisman, Mountain Man will never forget you and your service for caring for Michael Myers and housing him for a year. Anyway, so um, yeah, definitely not the best movie. It's on, you know, the lower end of the Halloween spectrum, but Funny enough, this is the movie I remember the most out of all the sequels because it's always the movie that AMC would play constantly during their marathons, um, during the, you know, 31 Days of Halloween or whatever marathons that AMC does. I just remember this fifth one would always be on, and it would be on several times, and I just remember, like, the barn scene with the kittens really well, and then the laundry shoot scene really well.